Hello, good people of OpenArt. Today, we're going to take a look at chat to edit And in my opinion, I think it's one of the tools that are underutilized. And there's been quite a few updates since my last video on chat to edit So getting started, we're going to head up to image and select chat to edit Under the model selection, I'm using Nano Banana for a very specific reason, and that's for the select area tool. The only other models that currently have it are the GPT models. So if I switch, you see it's still there. And the old Gemini model, which isn't that great to use. For this demo, I'll be sticking with Nano Banana. Since my last chat to edit video, we actually added the ability to use reference images. If you click on the plus button here, you can upload an image or grab it from your generation history. I'm going to do an example of that a bit later on. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and click on select area. And we're going to tweak this image in various ways. And I like to use the selection tool to give just a bit more direction and conditioning for the image that I want. The one thing you need to keep in mind with iterative editing as I mask this area here, you need to do it in steps. Only one to two changes. You don't want a paragraph long prompt. And in the prompt, we're going to simply put change the fire to a puff of smoke. We're going to go ahead and generate that image by clicking send message. And now instead of fire, we have a puff of smoke, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, one of the reasons why I like to use the select area method is because if I just prompted for changing the flame to a puff of smoke, you see that it's quite big. <laughs> And it's big enough where it really distracts the eye where it's so big and almost becoming the focus of the image. So one of the benefits of using select area is that you can, again, direct and condition the area of where you want the change to make. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't exactly in painting in traditional masking. You're just really telling the model just in this area, I want to make this change. It's not 100% perfect though, and I'll show you some examples of that later. The other change I want to make, I just feel like the color is too much on the outfit, and I want it to be a bit more dull, more torn up. So we're going to put a prompt and state, make the outfit worn out and torn brown and green colors. We'll go ahead and generate that. And now we have the outfit that I was envisioning in my head here. We're going to make one last change here. Just to reiterate, you don't have to select like this whole area. I'm going to add a castle here. You don't need to do that. You just have to put a rough area here where you want the change to take place. And for the prompt, we're going to put add an old castle in the distance. And just like that, we've edited our image in just a few simple steps. Now, if I do a before and after shot, here's before. And here is after. A recent update we've added is actually using chat to edit in Storyboard. And I'm going to show you why that's actually sometimes a little better than working in this interface. Head over to the left panel. We're going to click on the story and we're going to click on build a storyboard. And we'll select using image as first frame. So what I'm going to do is click on the plus button here to add a new storyboard we can delete that and the great thing about the storyboard is that you can create your images directly here so i'm going to do something super simple and the prompts are going to be a cute and adorable dragon trainer training a baby dragon pixar style nice and simple and i'll create a couple of them just to have a bit of selection great so here's the first image and i right away noticed she has a dragon tail and the second image, this character has the dragon tail as well. And we don't want that. So typically this would be an issue. We'd have to go back to the create page or go into canvas and edit that out. But now we can simply just click on the top corner here, which gives us access directly to chat to edit. So once we click on that, we can do the same thing. I'm going to click on select area. Again, we're using nano banana here. And I'm just going to highlight the tail and prompt for remove the tail. We're going to generate that. And voila, the tail is gone. If you're happy with the results, we can click on confirm and update. And then you'll notice that whichever image you decide to use 
it'll automatically put it in the start frame here. And yes, this is also a recent update to the storyboard where you can do start and end frame. By the way, storyboard 2.0 is coming. We've made little adjustments here and there, but the next version of storyboard 2.0 is around the corner. So stay tuned for that. Now I do like this first image, so I'm going to do the same thing as well. And we're going to edit out the tail. No more tail. We're going to confirm an update. So now I have an image that I want to animate. We have it selected. I'm going to do something really simple. And the prompt is the girl pets the baby dragon as it approaches her to cuddle. And we're going to go ahead and create a video there. I'm going to do two. The default model is Kling 2.5 and it works very well for most things, I would say. Now that the video is ready, let's expand it and take a look at the results. Yeah, very cute. Exactly what I wanted on the first shot. The next thing I want to show you is using reference images within chat to edit. You can use your own images or generated images, totally up to you. In my case, I just generated some. And here we have an empty living room overlooking the city. This would be a killer place to have, that's for sure. And then I generated this image for some living room accessories. You know, we have a couch, coffee table, side table, and all these other accessories that we're going to furnish the place. And one thing I want to point out here is that with Nano Banana, you can use up to four image references, but depending on your image, sometimes even using four image references, it could be hit or miss. One of the things that I like to do is create a sprite sheet of the items that I want to put into the image. And this will serve just as one reference image. And that can apply to characters, their outfits, or whatever the case may be. I highly recommend you to keep the reference images up to two, three, sometimes is even pushing it. And whatever accessories you need, put them all onto one or two reference images. And it works fairly simply. So we're going to select the plus button here and click on history, make this a little bigger. I'm going to select this one that we just looked at and my prompt is going to be fairly simple. Decorate the room with the items on the reference image. That's it. We're going to go ahead and generate that. And now our place is fully furnished, although it probably could use more furniture, maybe a TV, but everything on that reference image is here. The side table, the coffee table, dining table, could probably push it by the window. We've got the painting here. Obviously the bookshelf is kind of just at a place there, right? So what we're going to do is put in a prompt, move the bookshelf to the wall beside the painting. We see that it worked, but for <laughs> whatever reason, it added this extra couch here. So we're going to select that area once again and remove it. We're going to go ahead and generate it. And this is again, one of the reasons why I like the select area tool, because now we can be very specific which couch we want to remove. And there you go, our fully furnished living room that probably could use more decorations. And there you have it folks, chat to edit with our most recent updates. Once again, Storyboard 2.0 is just around the corner. And by the time I publish this video, we we'll probably only have a couple more days to submit your entry to the Open Art Music Video Awards. The submissions that have been shortlisted have already been featured on the billboard in Times Square. So make sure to get your entries in. In the meantime, if you've always wondered how to create AI influencers, make sure to check out this video right here. Until the next video, my friends, happy creating.